Hi, and welcome back. So today we are going to install and review the Tonewood amp. I'm going to go over the whole process of how to install it on the guitar. Uh, my last video, we did a swap of handedness from a right-handed model to a left-handed model. So I'll put a link in the description if you want to check that out. It was super easy to do. But now we're going to actually install this on the guitar in the exact way that the instructions recommend and say. So you'll be able to see the whole process. Um, I printed out the instructions. Uh, they had a PDF. We're going to go through it step by step. We're going to adjust the master gain, the whole thing. So um, I'm going to bring the camera around. I think that's the best way so that we can look at this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is put newer suction liners on these. This, this is the um, where the mat, the internal, where is it? The internal magnet brace will magnetize onto these, this metal. But these are called suction liners. They go on there and basically they're little pads, but you're supposed to peel off a clear area here. Um, and then um, it should like kind of suction onto the guitar in addition to the magnets. So I'm going to replace these and we're going to try and get this on. So basically you just line them up. Uh, and I'm going to kind of use the screw as my best guide and the metal here, obviously, and kind of cover up all that metal. And there you go. So that's on suction liner one. I'm going to put the other one on. Now, what I could was having trouble with was uh, I don't know about getting the clear. I've been trying to see how you pick it. It says there's a clear. Uh, let me get this out and show you what I mean. So in the instruction here, it says, Remove the clear top cover to expose the suction liner. So apparently there's something here that should peel off, but darned if I can find it. Like the whole thing seems like it wants to come apart and not really come off. So I'm going to try and do this off camera with a tweezer, see if I can get it to peel. If I get it started, I'll come back to the camera and show you. So stand by. Okay, so I managed to get them started. So you can see it is possible to get this off. You need a really good set of tweezers because this was not easy to get these clear pieces off. It was not easy. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend that you um, have a good set of tweezers because you're going to definitely need them. Um, it was not easy to get this off. And this is going to be like a little bit of a, a sticky thing here. And it, that's how that is going to work. So, okay. So that's done. So now um, I'm going to go grab the instructions and I'll show you the next step. Okay. So depending on the first thing is you have to determine where you're going to position it. Uh, depending on the type of guitar you have, that's where it's going to go. It goes lowest on a parlor guitar. It looks like a half an inch from the bottom, uh, eight tenths. I mean, it doesn't look like it's a huge difference. It's 2.16. So it is a big, it's an inch and a half difference from a jumbo to a parlor. Now I have a small undersized Martin, so I'm going to go with parlor for mine. Uh, that's where I'm going to position it on my guitar. Um, the other thing is, so they tell you to basically using blue painter's tape, which I've got, so it doesn't damage the guitar. Let me move this over. You're, you can't really see this. Let me move this up a little bit. Let me hold it up so you can see. So they're telling you to tape it on, but what this is showing you is those pads that I just peeled have to be flat on the guitar. They can't be angled, um, the suction pads, okay? So that's the one thing. But what I want to kind of do in advance here, they talk about setting the master gain, and they say before turning it on to test the sound, it's important to set the EQ flat on your acoustic guitar, plug it in to access it. So the idea is the master gain, um, let's see. So it's telling you combo click effects and parameters knobs simultaneously and settings will appear. Turn the effects knob clockwise till you see gain percentage. Click the effects knob and turn it clockwise to choose the amount of master gain. Select a value in the range of 5 to 100% that with your guitar volume halfway up is just enough to hear the tone wood amps effect comfortly. Comfortably. Click the effects knob again to confirm and apply the displayed value. 
So this is the goal here. This here says um, if this is the case with our default 50% master gain, you're ready to move on. I want to see since this is not new. I want to see what it's, the master gain is set at. So we're going to do that off the guitar. So I'm going to power this on. Okay, so now it's on. And it tells you the battery, tells you which what it's set at right now is Leslie, auto wall, overdrive, display bypass, which we don't need, and the first one is false. So what we have to do here is, let me see here, combo click effects and parameters, okay. We're in settings, okay. Turn the effects clockwise until you see gain, okay. Gain percent, okay. Click the effects. So we're at 70. So they say you should be at 50. So let's go to the default and we'll set it. And now we've set it and we're good. All right, so I'm going to power this back off again. So now we've set it to 50 because the reason I want to do that is they say here the default of 50 master gain is, you know, kind of what they what they recommend. So now the other thing is we've got the X brace here. Um, so I've got mine right here. And it does have some adhesives, but they recommend you test fit it because you want to make sure you're hitting these really clicking on with all four feet adhering before you stick it to the guitar. And then the other thing they tell you is when you do stick it to the guitar, you want to leave this on so that the magnet is working for an hour, I guess, to help these be pulled in and stick. The reason you're going to do that is you can't fit the guitar in the case with this on the back. And if you pop this off and this is not stuck, it's going to flop around inside the guitar. You don't want that. If this is stuck in place, you just put it on, take it off. The other nice thing is these magnetic X piece here, whatever they call it, X brace, you can purchase this separately. I think it's like $15. So you could put this in several guitars. You only need one unit. You can move it from guitar to guitar to guitar, which is kind of really nice about this setup. I kind of really like that, okay? But the first step is to attach this with blue tape to the back of the guitar. So I'm going to lay the guitar out, and we're going to do that. So let's get that going. Okay, so we're going to install the Tonewood amp. So the first thing you do is you, they tell you to tape this on the Tonewood amp and line it up, you know, centered in the guitar, okay, taped on the back, okay, which is what I've done. I've, in my case, I've unstrung the guitar, okay, because I don't want to have any issues with um, getting this in and out, the, uh, the uh, x brace. Now, I'm not pulling off these adhesive pads yet because what I'm going to do, you're supposed to put this in the guitar, Make sure all four uh, legs magnetize, okay? Make sure they all catch tightly. Once they do, then you take it out, peel them off, and put it right back where you had it. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to reach this in the hole. I'm going to need both hands and some light. So I'm going to do that, get it in, and then I'll show you it installed if I can with the light. So let me do that now. Okay, so I got the... Um, the uh, Tonewood amp fully installed in my guitar. Uh, so a couple things. So the X brace is in here, and I had to leave it attached magnetically for an hour, uh, or I think it said half an hour. I left it for an hour because you want the adhesives to really stick, and the magnet pulling them makes it stick. Now, it's not on here right now, so you can't even tell there's anything here. I mean, it's just you can't see in the guitar, but it's in there, you know, stuck on. And then what you do is you take the Tonewood amp, and you basically, let me show you what you do. So it's in here, and you just, with the cable jacks downward, you just find where it is and magnetize it on, and that's about it. And it's, that's it, it sticks. And then you use the little cable. Okay, so there are eight effects and then a bypass. I'm not sure what the bypass does, but, so the first one is called Hall. And it's got like a big v reverberation. Go to room. That you get a lot. Let me see if I can. See how it keeps going? That's room. Um, you've got 
plate, which is is a lot of continuation. You've got um, delay, which is so that's delay. You've got tremly, which is. So it's like a, a tremolo effect. You have um, Leslie, which is sounds like a little bit of tremly and some reverb. All of these are adjustable, each effect, by the way. Um, you've got auto wah. You get like a little wah wah effect. It's all probably hard to hear in the microphone, but. There's overdrive. Let me try it. Let me clip this back on and see if I can show you that one um, by strumming it. You get a little distortion in the back. And then the last thing is called DSP bypass, which I think it, that's if you go through this and out into something else. Um, but it's pretty nice. I kind of like it. Um, it's not. Here's, this is Hall again. And if I shut it off and unplug it, let me show you what that sounds like so you can make it see the difference. It's much, you can tell a difference. So, yeah, so overall, let me put this down this over here. Okay, so we've got Hall. Oh, it just went out of focus. That's perfect. It was in focus perfectly. There we go, Hall. Now, if you change the parameter wheel, right, the middle parameter wheel, let me see if I can get you to focus again. So you get decay and you can adjust it um, up to 25, down to 1. If you click, you get Predly up to 255. Well, actually, 25. I don't know why it said 255. And high cut. I don't know what that is, but you can adjust that from 25 down. So those are the three um, parameters for that one. If you were then, and then also there's a vo there's a, a volume. The third button. Let me get it in focus for you. Is your volume up to 25? Right. Everything goes up to 25. Now if you go to the next one, and everything requires three clicks, so you don't accidentally change this. So like room. Those ones, if I go, you have Decay also. You have Predly, which is set right now low. And then you have High Cut. So it looks like those two have the same. I don't know if all of them do. Let's check. So if I now switch to Plate, Decay, Predly, High Cut. Yeah, it looks like they all have those three things. Tremoli, Rate. OK, this one's different. Rate. Oops. You have rate. Uh, well, that wasn't what I wanted. I wish this would focus. Oops, I had it. Depth. There you go. Depth. And it looks like and delay. You can't see it, but I can see. There you go. Delay. Rate, depth, and delay. That's for Tremly. If you go to Leslie, you have also rate, depth. And reverb, rate, depth, and reverb. So that's a little different. Auto wah, you have sends, envelope, I guess, and, and reverb. And for uh, overdrive, which is the last one, you have drive, filter, and reverb. So you can adjust those. So you can see all of them, and any of those, you can then you can always adjust the volume. Um, but, and then you just rotate this one to go back to what you would like, whichever effect. And to turn it on and off, there's a little green button here, a blue button. You just push it and hold it until the uh, tells the power's off. So that's it. So let me turn the camera back around. So yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it has a lot of effects, a lot of things you can do. Um, 
I have been playing around with it, and some songs I really do like what it does, like a lot. I think it's great, um, but I just don't want to oversell it. Like I do like it, um, and it has a really it has a lot of use. It does a lot of cool effects for certain songs you're gonna play, but it, you have to really, you know. And oh, and by the way, you can save things like in the book. I'm not gonna go over the whole thing, but you can save this memory. So like you can adjust one of these, the parameters, and then save everything. Um, although I believe it saves it when you turn it on and off, I'm pretty sure. And everything you change saves. Um, but there's an option to save, save and load, actually, here. Save and load. Maybe that's just the main settings, I'm not sure, but I think it's everything. Um, you can adjust uh, master gain. Um, there's notch filters. I have no idea what those are. I'm not that advanced. But like I said, it's pretty good. I just don't want to oversell it. It's not like, you know, you're going to be sounded like you're, you know, you know, distorted and electric guitar. It's not what it is. But it does have some cool effects. It is useful uh, depending on what you're trying to do with it. So, yeah, I, I mean, you know, it's, it's cool to mess with. It's a cool um, guitar gadget. Um, you know, it has some, some uses that do uh, improve improve or I guess work with certain songs and make them sound really really cool without having to have an amp so yeah it's a cool thing um, I recommend it if you know um, it's not your only like if you have an amp then yes but if this is your only thing I wouldn't recommend it I mean it's limited it has eight things they all don't sound very different from each other uh, other than like the auto wah sounds different the um, the uh, delay sounds different. That one sounds because it's like a, a delay. But all the other ones are a lot of variations on reverb. So there's not a lot of variety. Uh, I mean, even though it has eight, there's apparently another one that you can get if you update the firmware. I have not tried that yet. Um, but yeah, so I think it's pretty cool. I don't think it's, you know, uh, your only effects thing. But if you just want something you can carry around with you, it fits in your, your gig bag, and then you just pop it out, put it on. And you can, you know, do some cool stuff that people will, will not be expecting out of an acoustic guitar without an amp. Yes, it's cool. So, yeah, other than that, I do recommend it. But like I said, I don't want to oversell it. It's good. It's not fantastic. So, yeah, that's my opinion. Thanks for watching. Um, thanks for subscribing. If you haven't yet, please click that subscribe button. And uh, like, comment, share. And we'll see you next time.